welcome to today's episode. You can see that I'm super, super excited because... I don't know, I don't know, I'm just excited. And it's to be. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, I'm more than excited to actually join you here today. <laughs> um, looking at the fact that this is a very wonderful platform to air your views and, you know, be all jittery. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, finally, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I got you guys excited. Excited. I'm excited. I don't know I'm so excited about yeah. this. But anyways... Yep. I mean, it's nice having you here. Actually, my wife actually watches your your content. I'm yeah, on the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, she was she was very excited. You know, she was like, "Oh, when you get to take snaps, I want to yeah. see." <laughs> yeah, 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 oh. yeah. So it's been it's been a whole um, roller coaster of um, good events. Um, but from from 2019 to date, I spent more of my time in the United Kingdom because I, I went to school there. Mm-hmm. That's why I did my second master's in, in, in Cardiff University. So I have lived there. That's why I met my wife. Okay. As well. And yeah, yeah. Fast forward, I moved back to Ghana and this is this is me now. My wife is still up there. She is. She's yeah. British. Oh, that's yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah, she's not like me. She's not like you. She doesn't so, speak cheese. So basically you've lived you've experienced the outside life and then experienced the Ghana. Yes, yes, yes. And I, have. I mean a lot of people would prefer to live outside the country. As compared to being in Ghana, I mean, I why can, do you why do you stay here? You know, Jenny, I can I can perfectly understand young people of today if they really want to live outside. Why? You know, looking at the circumstances surrounding their livelihoods here in the country, I can perfectly understand them if they want to live outside. Because I am a proponent of the fact that if you really want to make it in Ghana and below the age of thirty five make it, there are some KPIs or say key performance indicators, if I should put it, that you have to tick before you can actually break through. What are those? Primary of that is social capital. And that is what personally, as a, as a, as a young individual who has led the youth in Ghana for over the time, because in 2018, I was National Coordinating Secretary for NUCS, okay. which is the National Union of Ghana Students, about At the time, it was 12.2 million students under my leadership. So if I'm speaking on behalf of the youth in Ghana, I think I speak on a very good platform. And one of the things that I feel that the youth of Ghana have not taken cognizance of is the social capital. Now in Ghana, you need to make a conscious effort to get to know people. Get to know people. Yes. Yeah, people of substance, not just anyone. People of substance. Yes. Not just anyone. No, 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 no. Because not, not, not anyone can give you that breakthrough that you need. Exactly. You look at your life, you look at where you want to get to in life and how you want to get there. A lot of youth in Ghana or a lot of youth in general mm-hmm. know where they want to get to. They have a facade of where they want to get to. Yeah. But how they want to get there, they don't know. Okay, I like this. Yeah, you know. That's true. So that's true. with the house... It's either you come from, you know, a family where you have people to pull strings for you or you, 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 you probably are in a certain circle that, you know, they can call shots for you. If you're not identifying yourself in these kind of groups, then I think you need to make the conscious effort to get to know people that can say, oh, you know, I know Jenny, she's into this, she's a, you know, she, it's, a, it's a little startup, you know, I think you should actually have a little time to talk to her and see what she has. That is what I went through, and, you know, by the grace of God, uh, aside my nine-to-five, I own a company. So, basically, you weren't always on the top? No. I started from somewhere. When no. did your life start to get better? I think somewhere 2018. That is when I actually outdoored my life to the public. Okay. Prior to that, I was just a young individual who, you know, was raised by strict parents, mm-hmm. you know, don't go out, do this, learn hard, all that kind of thing. But while I was growing up, I had this perception that, oh, dada beye, you know, mama beye, yeah. you know, those kind of things. I don't really want to put in a lot of effort. And really and truly, my parents could do it for me. But when I was about to do my national service, mm-hmm. right, you know, my dad was like, oh, don't worry, relax, I'll sort stuff for you, blah, 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 blah. When the service posting came, I was posted to some village, I don't even remember the name of the school, yeah. but yeah, it was like a, a rural area, yeah. basic school to go and teach. And that is when 
through the processes of getting my posting changed to where I wanted to, because obviously I did petrochemical engineering in the university. I had the ambition to become a petrochemical engineer. So even though I respect the profession of teaching, it wasn't the career direction that I wanted to go to. And I yeah. believe that everyone would actually understand yeah. this philosophy of mine. So having to change that direction, I got to know that, you know, your, your father or your mom can, can just only get you to a certain point. Yeah. You need to find a certain way to just progress. You know? So that is when I started to outdoor myself. And thankfully, because I had attended pretty much good schools in, in Ghana, um, I went to Adisado College. I, I, I was a senior prefect there. So I knew people. Um, Infant Pem, Achimota, named, and because I went to KNUST, I was a student leader. So I had, you know, carved for myself a certain niche of getting to know people. So I had to capitalize on that. And you see, one thing is that 10 years ago, all the people that would be successful 20 years after 10, 10 years ago were in my peer group. Okay. So what I mean is that, say, as we are sitting here now, mm -hmm. The people that will be successful in Ghana 20 years later, mm -hmm. they're amongst us. Yeah, they won't true. come from anywhere. <laughs> they're amongst us. Yeah. So it's now up to you to look at where you want to get to and handpick the kind of friends you want and move with them. Mm -hmm. Call it being selective, that's fine. But I mm -hmm. think that sometimes in life you need to be very selective you know, in order to achieve certain aims. What would you say to the young ones out there who are really, really frustrated in terms of the career choice that they would want to have? Because let me use myself as an example. When I was growing up, I mean, growing up, you have your, your, your visions changing, like, like things that you want to pursue mm -hmm. changing. I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be into logistics. I wanted to be in the mining sector. But then it turns out that most of the time, as I grow up, I happen to realize that some of the things I, I cannot achieve, because, not because I don't have the potential, but I don't have the means to get to wherever I want to get yeah. to and then it really really gets me frustrated because right now i'm thinking of how to get a job that i want to get but then i don't have the i wanted to be in the mining sector that's why i do my service but like i don't really have the links so i'm like worried how and i know if i don't get a job i'm going to be very, very frustrated so how would you encourage people out there who are really, really frustrated about their life choices Ooh, i was waiting for this question actually because I speak on this matter because I've been there before. I, if I tell you how frustrated I have been in that country called United Kingdom, you would not even fathom. <laughs> I have been very... And, you know, when I was finishing my master's, we were in the height of the COVID okay. in 2020, where companies in the United Kingdom were not hiring anyone. You know, there were times that I couldn't pay my rent. My, my wife, then my girlfriend, mm -hmm. had to come in to support me. You know, and all those, like, I've, I've gone through all these times. And at the time, I was um, a, a resident of the United Kingdom because I was a student, and my residence permit was about to expire, and I had to come back home. And then I started asking myself questions like, hey, so Charlie, me back on a crash. Charlie, what have they come do for this country, you know? And yeah. I think because prior to me going to UK, I had worked as, you know, um, a NUCS coordinating secretary, which... The perception is that when you become a NUCS coordinating secretary or president, you have to succeed. That is the trajectory. Mm. So the likes of Honorable Harry Naidrisu, Honorable Samuku Jetua Blakwa, Honorable Muhammad Amin Adam, these are all ministers of state who were... Once there. You know, once there. So it's like, for you to be there and not succeed, they're like, ah, be ye be ne yo. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So when I look at all these things, I was like, eh, so if I go back to Ghana, what am I going to do? And that is when I started to cook, I mean, to cook up the company that I have today. Mm -hmm. you know, so I can understand if young people would be frustrated. First of all, I think they put, a, they put a lot of pressure on themselves. That's true. Too much pressure. Also, not to say that you should be too relaxed. But I think because of the inherent social media, you know, now you see a lot of people doing, which are fake anyways. Most of the things oh, you that, put on social media, that are not fake. most of that the things are fake. That on us. You know, and, but, but I feel that some of the things that ginger the youth of Ghana, most of them is what they call settings. <laughs> settings, man. I'm a communications expert. Mm. In communications, there is something called agenda setting. 
I'm sitting in my room. I want you to think a certain way. There's a way I'll carve a certain story. And when you see it, you think a certain way. But actually, it's not like that. Okay. And I, I feel that that is what some people, you know, do. It's okay for them to do whatever they want to do. But as a young individual, if you, if you see these things and then you get so frustrated, yeah, Charlie, I want money. Now, you stop thinking. Okay. And your whole energy starts to skew towards your frustration. Meanwhile, I believe that most of the things that can make us successful are all around us. Initially, I thought they weren't, but when I started to harness what I named as social capital, that's when I realized that, hmm, Charlie, everything that would make a human being successful is all around us. Yeah. So you said, okay, you wanted to be a journalist. Now I want to ask you, how many successful people in the journalism industry have you made a conscious effort to meet? Zero. Exactly. And you see, it's not like you're going to meet them for them to give you money. No. Sometimes it's just to just build that relation with them. Sometimes it's just for them to just mention you somewhere. Exactly. You know, sometimes you'll be there and then you ju- you're just going to get a call. I have been sat somewhere and then I just got a call. Oh, hi, are we speaking to Susan? So I'm like, yeah. Oh, Susan so spoke about you. Can we have a meeting? And then, you know... I tap into this one. After you guys set the meeting, now it's up to you to prove your substance. Mm, yeah. Because whoever is making that, um, you know, recommendation, it's, it's only up to you meeting your investor. Mm. Afterwards, it's up to the substance in your head. I feel like what you're saying is true. Because recently, I went, for, I went somewhere... Someone recommended me and I went somewhere. Yeah. But when I came back, I felt like I had failed because I wasn't knowledgeable enough. I didn't have information. So yeah. even though I know I'm capable for the job, because I didn't prove myself there, yeah. I really didn't get a chance. Yeah. So I feel like it's, it's... And then again, I feel like society and the people around us put so much... Like, it affects us. Mm. That's why we are pressured. Yeah. So, and again, it's about our age. I feel like yeah. when I'm 30, I should be this... When I'm 28, I should be this. And then it happens that within that period that we set our, our life and goals and age to, mm. when we don't get it, we have to be very, very frustrated. Yeah. So like in my 30s, probably my mom is expecting me to be married, to have a job, to have a... Fa- but then I don't Just have it. Force, yeah. And I feel like in this country, a lot of people associate, let's say someone is 30 and doesn't have a job to um, laziness. I feel like there are people that are genuinely working nine hours that are still not making it in this life. And it's not because of how lazy they are, because in fact, like, yeah. why, yeah, 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 yeah. so in fact, and yeah. I, I feel like there are even people that have been working for so many years in offices that are yeah. still even struggling. Yeah. And I really cannot tell why. So what I know, as a matter of fact, is salaries don't make you a billionaire or a millionaire. What does? A business. You need to find a way to build something on your own. Now, when I was moving to Ghana in 2021, it was something that I really used to think about all the time. If I really want to start a business, what? Am I going to sell? Am I going to... Like, what, 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 what am I going to do that someone isn't already doing here yeah. in Ghana? But then I realized that, no, through my social capital, there is a certain way that I can bring together young individuals who have a certain kind of skill and expertise that I probably wouldn't have, bring them together, partner with them, and use my social capital to get business for us, they would execute it and we'll split it. Yes. That, was, that was something that I thought about, you know. And really and truly, it, there is no problem with an individual setting, you know, timelines for your life. Oh, I want to get here at this time. I did the same for myself. Did it work for you? It did. Probably even more. I never knew I would have two masters in my life. Like I never, never in my wildest dream. In fact, if any K university person in my batch is watching me, they'll know this thing. I was one of the most unserious students in, in school. For real? Yes, because I realized at that time, I realized that academics is good, but it wasn't going to totally open the door for me. Mm. You see, one of the things that I've noticed about young people in Ghana in our generation is that we still use the... Um, we, we use the strategies that our parents had mm-hmm. 
in like 30, 40 years ago. In those times, even if you are an A-level graduate or O-level graduate, you still have gone, like you, you're going to have work to do. Yeah. But now, degree and master's, you even get work to do. So times have changed. Mm -hmm. These times that have changed, they came with different know-hows. Yeah. It's up to us to actually adapt to these things. Mm -hmm. So me, somewhere 2016, 2015, let's say 2016, when I was in like third year, because I completed Kenya State in 2017, I knew that, yes, it's good to be a petrochemical engineer and whatnot, but that's not enough. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't even get first class. I, mean, I had second class lower. And I'm saying this, I'm saying this here because... <laughs> it doesn't matter. Your, your second class, first class, it doesn't really matter. And you see, there is, there is a certain lecturer in Kenya University called Zuzana Mumadi. She's a senior lecturer, you know, bless her. She, <laughs> she, she once told me that I would never make it in life after my Kenya University academic life because I wasn't performing well in a class. But I think that was one of the things that really gingered me to do more. Yeah to prove her wrong. And recently, I think somewhere two years ago, when I moved back to Ghana, you know, I received a text message from some lecturers in Kenya. I said, oh, congratulations. I was just saying in my mind that I'm glad that I did not succumb to the things that these mm. people said. Yeah. So I feel that now skills and expertise are taking precedence over your degree that you have. So you need to have a skill. You need to have yes. something on your own. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a petrochemical engineer. You see, when I even meet my friends and I say this thing, they don't even believe it. Because th there is nothing engineering about my life. <laughs> there is, I don't wear Wellington boots. I, I'm trying to say. I don't oh, wear all those things. I've even yeah. forgotten the name. Yeah, it's like, I don't wear protective clothing. I don't wear PPEs, whatever. I don't go to the oil rig. But you see, when I completed school, I realized that, listen, now I went to school to do engineering. I'm, I'm done with it. Now I want to harness the skills and competencies that I have. In you. In me. So that is when I, well, so after, after, after my, first, my first degree, I did my first master's in petroleum accounting and finance. Then afterwards, I did the, the, the master's in communication. Okay. Now communication was simply because I was a public speaker. I, I just like to talk. Uh, and debate and, you know, football and you are just talking. But I realized that for someone who likes to debate and is educated, why not carve a niche in communication? Mm -hmm. So I went to study and I had that degree, that, that master's degree, but that was to buttress my skill. Mm. Fast forward, when I was employed at the Ministry of Energy, I realized that my skill as a digital media, you know, strategist or a communication strategist helped my role as a communication strategist at the energy ministry. Okay. But, but primarily, because the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum is a technical field, I needed my skill from being a petrochemical engineer. <laughs> Do you get I me? Mean? Because yeah. yes, you'll be communicating, but you need to communicate technical things. So okay. you cannot communicate effectively if you are not a technical person. I get it. So, so every aspect of your life was needed. E you know what I mean? Like Basically. everything came together. So I feel like sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and blah, blah, blah. But if we give ourselves some time, get to know exactly what it is we want to do and how we want to do it. Most of the time is, is the how. Mm. That so is a one thing. Have potentials and purpose, but yeah. then how it was going to manifest yeah. is the problem. Yeah. You can see, I know a lot of people that I've met that I'm like, this person has potentials. Yeah. But then over to me, I know that probably in your time, there was someone that you met, I was like, oh, I probably won't have a plan. Like, mm. he has this potential. But then it goes to your point that you met them years ago and then they, they were not like, they were not that. Mm. Where the potential go? Because of how to execute it. I mean, exactly. they didn't know yeah, the how. how. So they're going to grow old or die yeah. with whatever potentials yeah. that they had in them. Yeah. And I feel like, do you think we are to use you, we are the youth here. We have hope in this country. Like, if we get the chance to go outside, like, now everybody's going outside. If I get a chance to go outside, do you think I should just take the opportunity to just live? So, per my understanding of what an opportunity is, yeah. it is something good that comes your way unexpected. Mm -hmm. I feel that if you have such an opportunity, you need to utilize it. That's what I feel. And I'm saying that on the back of the fact that every successful person that I know in this country mm. has had 
a certain kind of exposure outside. There is something you need to go and learn somewhere. It might not necessarily even be outside, but somewhere. It could be somewhere in Ghana. It could be somewhere in Africa. It could be somewhere in Europe. But there is something you need to go and learn somewhere. You can't always be in a particular place. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. You need to explore. You need to, you know, open your mind to certain kind of exposures so that if you are coming back, you would contribute a very significant and relevant quota to our development in this country. That is what I believe. I feel like, uh, I, I hear a lot of people say that people who are like, bank, let's say someone is a banker here, is a lecturer here, cannot be compared to someone that lives in the UK and then is a cleaner there. Their lives there are much better than people who live in Ghana and work in banks and things like that. What, what do you have to say about it? Since you have lived there. Honestly speaking, I, I don't agree entirely when they say that. Why? Because these are different circumstances. These are different indicators. Do you get what I mean? Take, for example, I am... Um, you know, before, before I get there, my dad used to always tell me that if you want to compare yourself to someone who is older than you, compare yourself to the person from when the person was your age. Okay. So let's say I'm 28. I have a mentor who is 64 years. Mm. It's going to be unreasonable to compare myself at 28 years to the person at 64, 64. years. It doesn't make sense. Mm. I would rather want to compare myself to the person when the person was 28 years. Okay. That is how I'll be able to monitor my progress. Mm. So for some Ghanaians to say that, oh, um, for a banker in Ghana, yeah. you know, who is doing well, his or her life could not be compared to someone who's a cleaner in the UK. See, when you strip what the government gives to that cleaner in the United Kingdom, they are naked. And I say this on authority because... I have been a bartender in UK. I have been a... I hear like there's no easy at all. It's oh, not yeah. Like, it's not so sweet like how we say it. Here. No. You see, before, before, I, before I went to United Kingdom, I used to job shame a lot because I, I come from a very, um, should I say, like I come from a family where people are good academically, career-wise, everyone mm. is doing well, you know, politicians and whatnot. So... I can't remember, before I went to Britain, a cousin of mine, she's a medical doctor, she was like, oh, you know, when you um, go into school, you can have a part-time job, you know, maybe if it's bartendering. I told that point, like, listen, I'm not coming to you, can't kind of do all this nasty <laughs> shit. I told that point, and she was like, oh, no, you, you need to see the benefits in all that. Fast forward, no one told me to go and apply for any job when I started schooling. No one. Yeah. Because I was a scholarship student at a point, my, my stipends were not coming. I couldn't always call my parents for them to change cities to pounds and send me, you know. So I had to be a man and get a job, you know. So I, I, I worked at Amazon before. Okay. As a, we used to pack boxes. Mm-hmm. So when people see me today, like, oh, you be DB. I just say, no, you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, we used to pack boxes. I've worked at Amazon. I've worked at DHL. Yeah. Um, I've been a bartender. I've worked at a cashier, as a cashier um, at um, Sainsbury's, Tesco, supermarkets. I've, I've done all these things. Aside the fact that it has given me that opportunity to first and foremost have good interpersonal relations with other people. I have learned how to also live with people and, you know, live within my means. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I feel like uh, one of the things about us is that we are too reluctant, Mm. yeah? And I think we have high, this high expectation. I remember when I was in uni, um, first and second year, my older sister was taking care of my uni. I feel like if you want to, this is like, if you want to do something, you do it if you are determined. First and second year, my sister was paying my uni fees. Third year, like, I mean, end of second year, she, I think I was COVID, 2020. So okay. she lost, she having to lose her job. Okay. And I mean, how I was going to pay the fees was very, very difficult. So student loan, I'm like, I don't, I can't really go and take this loan. I was like <laughs> too shy to go and ask them to give me a loan. So basically, second year uni, I had to apply to a restaurant in Kumasi. And I applied to be a cashier. I mean, cashier, it was a casino. It wasn't a restaurant. It was a casino. Let me say it. Okay. it was a, and then cashier in the casino was like, nice. It's not like too. But apparently, I didn't get a cashier. I was asked to be a, a waitress. Now, it wasn't easy because, Charlene, you I mean, 
I don't know, they contact them, go ahead, go ahead, waitress. But then, funny enough, I went there and it wasn't, it was waitress combined with cleaner. Mm. So I was cleaning the washroom, yeah. Yeah. being a waitress, and was Chinese, Chinese casino. Yes. In Crawford, they did you good yes, friends. Yes, they yes, 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 yes. I remember there are times I'll be cleaning the toilet and just be crying. I'm like, mm. like Charlie, why? Why? Because, yeah. Yeah. and I didn't have the time in school, uni, because yeah. right after class, I had to yeah. go, because yeah. I needed money to be able to make sure that I had, I, you know, I get my school fees to pay, wow. because, I, I really wasn't, I wanted to finish my university, yeah. no matter what. Mm. It doesn't matter if I'm in uni, I'm in tech, people know me. Exactly. I was trying hard, and mm. you see me cleaning the toilet, or yeah. you see me washing dishes, or... Yeah. And it's amazing, so I feel like, I find it funny when people are like, I didn't finish school because my dad didn't pay my school fees, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't get this opportunity because someone... Why, yeah. why don't you just yeah. make the effort? Yeah, they didn't I feel like push a lot of people themselves are just enough. proud. They didn't push themselves in me. I have one of my friends, Joseph in Sia, he he works for JP Morgan in, 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 in London. He told me that Shadrach, listen, it's it's just a preparatory stage for you. Yeah. So when you go out there and you're doing your job, do that job diligently as though you were a banker or you were uh, doing a white color job. So I used to put priority on my cleaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because in Britain, if you are a bartender, when you finish, another cleaner is not going to come clean for you. You no, need to clean the mess you've made. So, yes, I've finished everything, and then I'm going to go grab a mop and a bucket, squeeze it, everything, clean it, and go back to lectures. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people in the university wouldn't want to do that because I'm in the university. Why would I have to go and clean something? I mean, see, unnecessary pressure. Unnecessary pressure. And I, I, I feel like when, if we keep living like that, a lot of things are going to be retarded for us. It's, it's very, very funny because I don't understand if you are struggling in this life, you are probably not well to do or you are poor. Mm. Humble yourself and go and work. You don't want to go and work yeah. because you are, you have pride yeah. or you are shy. You are not correct. Yeah. See, I tell you what, this thing that I'm saying here, my parents don't even know about it. I'm, see, my dad told me categorically yeah. that if you go to UK and you need money, Take a phone, send a WhatsApp text, we will credit your account. Full stop. End of story. But you see, I realized that on until when? Until when would I always call my dad? Mm. Until when would I always call my mom? At a point you become a nuisance. Oh crow, school yeah. crow, you know. So I think the last air ticket that my parents probably bought for me was like in 2019. From 2019 to date, I, I think I probably have had more than 10 trips in and out. Yeah. And I've, I've sorted my own, uh, you know, yeah, because I don't need anyone's anything. Yeah. So I feel that young people or the youth, we shouldn't put too much pressure on ourselves and let's just work the plow. Mm -hmm. Let's put our efforts in whatever we side hustle doing. that we found doing. And, you know, really and truly, I have a very good feeling that things are going to blow mm -hmm. for you. I've there are so many times that sometimes I'm like down, I'm disappointed in myself. Mm. Then I said, I'm like, ah, but who will encourage me? Exactly. If I don't encourage myself enough, yeah. I can't really do yeah. it. Yeah. So you need, to, you need to be your first person. You need to be your own encouragement. Yeah. And always be in a positive see, light. No one can be more interested in your success story more than yourself. Exactly. Like no exactly. one can be more like, exactly. who else? Exactly. Yes, you have parents and whatnot, but like no one can be more interested. Like you are your greatest MVP. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you are, you are putting in that effort. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And really and truly, we were talking about the how. A lot of people know what they want to do, but how would they do it? That is why the social capital is very important. Because the people, the, the people of substance that you would want to be meeting, these are people that they have the answers to the how. Write it down. Write it down. They have the answers to the how. They yeah. just won't tell you. A few of the people that have mentored me to this stage, bless them. Um, the Honorable Dr. Matthew Pukupempe, who is my boss that I work for, he didn't have things easy in his life. Nana Kwame Bedia he didn't have things easy in his life. Um, Kennedy Oseji, Kennedy Despite. You see, people think, oh, his father is Despite. Maybe the basic things in their lives, yes, they were, they were sorted. But you don't know the hassle. Kennedy went to school in Liverpool. Do you know what he was going through there? No one knows. But because I bothered to meet him, be very close to him, and ask yeah. him, bro, how Charlie, did you do it? I did we say now, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I want to be being some in this and that is how you'd be able to answer the house until then. Mm-hmm. You I answer, feel like, you I feel answer like it for yourself. Tell us. I feel like those are many up there. Most of them do not tell us what they really It's did. because most of the time when we approach them, it's kind of copy. 80% of people who want to approach successful people or copy be you know. Yeah, oh, yes. Is it a Ghanaian mentality? I don't know. I've never met any other African, apart from South Africans, and I, I haven't done business with them, but it's Ghanaians that I've lived with. But most, I feel like most of the people that... And, and, and this is what some successful people have told me. So, Obi Owa, Obeena, they genuinely want to open some things for you to know. But it's like, Charlie, oh, but no, the problems, you know, but the crack crying, you know, and they say anything for the boys. The crack crying, you know, no, no. Seek knowledge. And you see, one very rich person in, in Ghana, I, I wouldn't mention the person, the person told me that most under 30 people who come to his office, the problems be bray. Not just say, I want you to give last encouragement to people out there who are really, really frustrated and cannot find their way around lives in terms of career, finance. Yeah. What do you have to tell some of us that are so struggling to like achieve whatever we want to achieve in this life? So, with respect to planning one's life, I think having a pragmatic five-year plan is too much for a young individual. Okay. That's too much pressure. Okay. And by pragmatic, I mean practical. Okay. This month, after this month, after, that, after this month, okay. this is what I want to do. For five years straight, it's, 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 it's too much for a young individual. Two years is okay. That's what I did for my life. Yeah. So, at every point in time, from... Today, 28th of March, 2023, to 28th of March, 2025. I know what I want to do every month. Wow. Yes. Life would throw certain things at you. Things would change, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. You need to give allowances for these kind of things. But if in the space of every two years, you know exactly what you want to do. In the space of five years, you would have covered four. Okay. You know. So... And aside that, what I would also say is that, guys, make a conscious effort to build social capital for yourself. You know, it's not every time that Chalemo could go front, back, go, blow money. You know, all these things are nice. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to have. But you see, after you, you have all these drinks and, you know, we they chill and blah, blah, blah. Just ask yourself, Tini Pakro, we are meaning a chili we. I have a certain principle in my life, and that's why and some people might have, you know, a reservation about me because of that. If you become my friend, and after six months, I can't point out at least two positive things you done, I will cut you off. It's as simple as that. I don't need, life is not a market. I don't need too many friends in my life walking up and down. No. So even if it is just an encouragement that I get from you as a friend, I know that you are playing a certain role. Yeah. So let's make ourselves available to build social capital. And obviously, this social capital comes with certain tenets and ramifications. You know, my dad always used to tell me that how you, how you dress determines how you are dressed. Fact. I said this today. Yeah. See, no mean to say anything disrespectful, but when I'm circle, now what it, when I look at me, do you think I'm a thief? Do I look like a thief? No, but maybe I'm the thief. You may never know. It's because of how I look. Yeah. I look probably I look um presentable, you know. And that is one thing that I have identified from successful people. When they see you, they don't know you, but they look at you and they just grade you. Can tell. And that is when they'll break that barrier to talk to you or not. You can call it good, you can call it bad, but nipa nipa no no. So if you're a young individual, you know, there is a way to brand yourself. And branding is branding is very key as a young individual. There's a difference between living a fake life and branding yourself. Branding yourself is simply just polishing yourself to seem a way that you want to be, or you know, a way that you want others to perceive you. It is, I, I think it is very different from living a fake life. Okay. Do you get what I mean? I yes. 
The president of Ghana met the vice president of the U.S. just recently. Why didn't he wear Jalabia to go in and talk to her? He's rich. Why didn't he wear Jalabia? But he wore a suit. Why? It's called political correctness. If you learn diplomacy, that's why it's called political correctness. There's a certain way you want to tout yourself. Because you probably haven't met the person for a very long time. So the short time that you're meeting the person, you need to make a perception in the person's mind. Leave an impression. Yeah. So social capital is what I want to live on this show. And it worked for me. It worked for a lot of people. And I know it's going to work for you. It's as simple as that. I don't know. I really, I really had. I'm not gonna say I had fun. So many things that I've got from this episode. I mean, yeah, I'm me motivated. I'm encouraged, and I'm never giving up. I'm really, really grateful that you were able to make it here with us. Today. Thank you so much. And Thank you so hopefully much. Hopefully, we'll meet him in the like when you meet him in the future. Please make sure you take knowledge. Don't ask for money. When you meet me in the future, just you know, come and give me a hug. <laughs> I'm more than I'm, I'm more than excited, you know. But yeah, on the most serious notes. I've been I've been so humbled to be here. It's a very wonderful show. Your your viewers, the people that engage, you know, with your content, I think they're very lovely people. And I think, you know, they love they love what you do. So yeah, just yeah. keep doing it. Yeah. Keep doing it. Anyways, do not forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. I'll see you another time. Bye. Bye.